So now that we're redirecting our users to PayPal, we need to actually store the transaction information in the database so we can identify the user and then actually charge the user when they uh, return to our site. But before we do that, we want to generate and store a hash in a session so we can identify them when they return. So to do this, we're going to create a variable called hash. Now payment, which we're using up here to create a payment on the API, has a get ID method, which allows us to actually grab the ID back. And we'll be using that when we store it in the database, but we want to hash this first. So using the MD5 function is perfectly fine. We're going to use the get ID method to grab that and hash it. So we now have a hash that we can store in the session to identify this user. So we're going to store this with a key PayPal hash and then assign hash to that. So now when they return, we have a session that we can then look up in the database, but we need to store this now. So let's create a variable just called store. We'll use DB that we set up earlier and we will use the prepare method. So this is the query that we want to repair, uh, prepare. Insert into transactions PayPal, remember that's our table name. The data we want to store is user ID. We want to store the payment ID and the hash. Down here then is going to be the values. So again, these are just going to be placeholders, not actual data. Payment ID and hash. While we're at it, we can also set the complete if we want. We don't need to do this. We can default it to zero, but let's just uh, put it in there for clarity anyway. So let's execute this prepared statement. So we're going to say store execute. And then in here, we're going to pass in an array with the placeholder names. In this case, the user ID is just going to be the session that we stored in start.php for our example user. Payment ID, we're just reusing the get ID method. And the hash is obviously going to be that hash that we generated up here and also stored in a session. So when the user returns from entering their details, what's going to happen is this session is still going to be available to us so we can actually look that up in the database in order to set that to complete. And we can also then grab the payment ID if we need it and uh, then go ahead and charge the user. So now that we've done this, let's test the journey again just to make sure that stores, make sure we haven't done anything wrong. So I click become a member. Now at this point, we've created the payment uh, on PayPal, but if we refresh in here, so it looks like we've done something wrong. So let's go back and check the code. Okay, so that table should be transactions PayPal. Okay, so let's try this again. If we head over to the database while that's loading, that should automatically have been created. So we've now got the payment ID here. We've got the hash and we've got complete set to zero. So now the idea is when we return, we can enter our details here hit login. When we return back to the site, we've got that hash available here. So we can look that up in the database, grab the payment ID, and then actually process a payment based on this payment ID. So if I hit continue, remember, we're going to be sent back to pay.php. And there we go. Now you notice we do actually have the payment ID in the response, so we don't really need to do this, but it's a good idea to keep track of transactions anyway. So you can bypass this if you really want to, but in our case, we will go ahead and uh, use this method. So that's the uh, storing of the actual transaction data. In the next video, we're gonna be building pay.php which will allow us to take these details and actually charge the user's account. 
and we can actually check this in the PayPal developer panel uh, on the dashboard and we can look at transactions as well. We can see if these transactions have actually gone through. Remember at this point, no one has been charged.